In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgression unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God on high, and on
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first lesson for the festival of Pentecost is written in the first book of Moses, known as Genesis, chapter 11. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As men moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the, that the men were building. The Lord said, as if, one pe as if as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not un understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The second lesson is written in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In these last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and on signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me. 
but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. What we confess in our daily creed, the Apostles' Creed, is that believing in the Holy Spirit is believing in the Holy Christian Church. For it is the Holy Spirit who gathers Christ's church, and it is the Holy Spirit who keeps it. The Holy Christian Church is not a building. 
It's not an organization or a denomination. Christ Church is the gathering of Christ's people. It is people from every nation or language, age or generation. It is people who believe in him. It is people who love him. But if the church is all about Jesus, what does the church have to do with the Holy Spirit? And why is it that it seems that in the church we don't spend nearly as much time talking about the Holy Spirit as we do about Jesus? In the liturgical year, for example, at least half of the year is entirely devoted to the life of Christ every year. But the Holy Spirit gets just one day, this one. Perhaps someone might even criticize and say, you're not being very spirit-filled. But listen to the way Jesus describes the Holy Spirit. He says, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. When the Holy Spirit speaks, what does he say? You've met people, I'm sure, who love to talk about themselves You've worked with them, you've dated them perhaps, you, you try to change the subject, but the conversation always seems to come back around to them and whatever it is that is incredibly interesting to them. When the Holy Spirit speaks, what does he talk about? Himself? Never. Never. Why don't we talk about the Holy Spirit more? Well, mostly because all the Spirit wants to do is talk about Jesus. It's his only work, his only topic of conversation. His only interest is Jesus. Luther once quipped, Poor Holy Spirit, he doesn't know anything except Jesus. But that's the point. That's his work. He teaches you and reminds you of Jesus. You can see how that happened on Pentecost. On the Holy Spirit's big day, the Spirit makes a grand entrance, even more magnificent than coming in the form of a dove. This time the Holy Spirit comes with the sound of the wind and the tongues of fire. How exciting, how, but how does he do it? What does he do? What does he say? Is the sound of the wind aimed at their emotions? Are the tongues of fire there for a dramatic effect? I don't know. But look at what the result of the Spirit's work is. You heard it. People from all over the map heard the disciples proclaiming the wonders of God in their own tongue, and what do they say? What does Peter talk about when he stands up to address the crowd? Jesus. Peter's sermon in the rest of Acts chapter 2 is all about Jesus, what Jesus has done, what Jesus has said. And then what happened? It tells us that the people who heard, they were cut to the heart by the preaching of the law, and they were comforted by the message of the gospel. As many as 3,000 believed and were baptized and added to their number that, is, that day. That is, they joined the Holy Christian Church. Because God had sent his Holy Spirit, and through the preaching of Jesus, the Holy Spirit gathered Christ's church, that is, gathered those who believed to be brought to Jesus. Jesus and his church always go together. Many times in the New Testament, the church is called the body of Christ. The church is the body, Christ is the head. And you, of course, know what happens when a body is separated from its head. It dies. 
They cannot continue to live. They cannot ever live separately. Jesus promised that that though he was going away from them, even though he was going to ascend into heaven, he would never leave them. He said to them, Surely, behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And then he left. He ascended into heaven. Where is Jesus? In heaven. And even to this day. Well, then how can we be his church if Jesus is not in it? Now, those of you with theologically sharp minds will say, Pastor, we, we know that Jesus ascended into heaven with, with the use of all his divine attributes. That means that Jesus is no longer bound to one place at a time that because he is able to be present everywhere. And that's true. Jesus is everywhere. But for his church... He has promised more. It's more than the fact that he is present in all places at all times. Jesus said this, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. Jesus promised promises to those who love him, who are members of his body, part of his church, that he and the Father live with them. God himself intimately makes his home in the hearts of his believers. And only there. He does not dwell in this way. He does not dwell in or with those who are outside of his church, apart from Christ, who do not love him, who do not believe him. We will often describe the church, the Holy Christian Church, as invisible because no one can see faith except God alone. No one can see love for God from the heart. And even the work of the Holy Spirit who brings people to faith works as invisibly and as mysteriously as the wind. You couldn't see the Holy Spirit working on Pentecost. You couldn't see the Holy Spirit gathering the church. But you could see the flames. And you could hear the sounds. So Jesus says, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. So you may not see the church. You can't see the Holy Spirit or his works. You can't even see the results. But you can see the Spirit's tools. You can hear what the Spirit says. You want proof that the Holy Spirit continues to gather his church? Look for people keeping his word. Look for people who who can gather together, probably in a building, with other people and make Jesus' words the centering of their gathering and even the center of their building. Look for people who hear his words and keep them. That is where you will find the church, Christ church, and that is where you will find Jesus. Unfortunately, the opposite is also true. Jesus says, He who does not love me will not keep my words. There are really only two kinds of people in this world. There are those who love Jesus and keep his word, and there are those who do not. There are those who hear and treasure and keep and honor his words, and there are those who do other things, who who despise preaching in his word, who have their excuses and their priorities and their objects of their love and worship. If they are apart from Jesus' word, they are apart from Jesus. They are outside of his church, outside of salvation. 
but in his word. The Holy Spirit continues to gather his church even from among those who once failed to listen. He calls them to repentance. He gathers them, enlightens them, and sanctifies his church on earth. But he also keeps this Christian church in the saving faith. See, Jesus spoke these words of our gospel for today to his disciples before he left them. He said, I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. Jesus' disciples already believed in him before Pentecost. They were already part of Christ's church long before the Holy Spirit gathered the church on Pentecost. Jesus promised the Holy Spirit for his disciples not just to create faith in them, not just to gather his church, but to keep it. Jesus speaks these words with his disciples while he was still with them because he knew what was coming. He knew that he was going to the cross. He knew that in the days to come, his disciples would be tempted and that they would fail. And he knew that Satan, the ruler of this world, was coming, and Satan wants nothing more than to take hold of Christ's own and to separate them from him and to separate them from his word. And all the more in the days following Christ's ascension. All the more in these days when it seems that the prince of this world actually has a hold not just on the world but perhaps even on us. And we fail. And our failures cause us to be afraid. Of course, we might not acknowledge our failures or our fears out loud. That's just part of the devil's ploy too. To keep you living in fear alone. Keeping quiet, just you and your sin. But you should be glad that Jesus left and went to his Father. Because here comes the Holy Spirit to remind of, of Jesus' words and his works. So that having confessed your sin, the Holy Spirit through his servant may speak into your ears an absolution from your sin which alone can give, give you peace for a guilty conscience to wash water over your head as a seal of your honored status as God's own child which no one can take from you. The Holy Spirit comes to place into your own body, Jesus' own body and his own blood to strengthen and preserve you in the true faith until life everlasting. Of course, you still, you also don't know what challenges will come to your faith this day this week but Jesus does and so today he gives you his Holy Spirit to keep you in his church to strengthen you in faith he's given his means of grace for this very purpose he's given you his word that you may keep it and through it God the Father Son and Holy Spirit will keep you it's probably true that we don't talk that much about the Holy Spirit in church. But you can hardly be in church without the Holy Spirit speaking. You hear him. And you see him in the words of Christ every Sunday when we gather here. You see the Holy Spirit's work in holy baptism and every time you recall it. You see his work whenever his body and blood is placed upon his altar. Not every Sunday is Pentecost. But every Sunday, Jesus keeps his promise, keeps his word, and gives his Holy Spirit. And through him, gives you peace, joy. Love for God in your neighbor gives us life 
and eternal salvation. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join now in confessing the Christian faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Let us pray. For gladness in the Spirit, who through his church fills the world with the remembrance of everything Christ Jesus has spoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church established on the proclamation of Christ, that his Spirit would sustain the apostolic preaching to the ends of the earth, 
and that in every tongue the mighty works of God would be heard. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That our loving Father would come with his Son to make his home among us, and that with his, by his word the Spirit would bind our families together, guide our life and conversation, and continue among us in each coming generation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For good government that serves to keep our Lord's good order, and that he would preserve it from pride that exalts this earthly city to the heights of his eternal kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in our time, yet wisdom to fix our hearts chiefly on Christ's true and lasting peace, which this world can never give. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty Father, with your Son, Jesus Christ, Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts through your word to rule and govern us according to your will. Comfort us in every temptation and misfortune and defend us against every error that we may continue steadfast in the faith, increase in love and good works, and trusting firmly in your grace for us by his death, obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and sitting at your right hand poured out on this day the promised Holy Spirit on his chosen disciples. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Almighty, most merciful Father, send down upon us the grace of your Holy Spirit, and through your holy word be pleased to bless and sanctify these your gifts of bread and wine, that they may be the body and the blood of your most dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, O Lord, according to his institution, we, your servants, celebrate here before your divine majesty with these your holy gifts, the commemoration your Son has willed us to make remembering his blessed passion, mighty resurrection, and glorious ascension. 
we give you most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits he has secured for us. And we humbly ask you to grant that by his merits and death and through faith in his blood, we in your whole church may receive forgiveness of sins and all other benefits of his passion. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
O give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this Holy Supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.